welcome Nancy to the stage. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you love to celebrate birthdays? I know you've been asking. Yes, right? <laughs> I love celebrating. Is it the cake? You think it's the cake? Yeah. Yeah? Presents. Yeah, presents are fun. I love presents. <laughs> I love to shop, too. Um, it's the people, the people that surround you when you're around your birthday. It's your family, it's your friends, it's your community, it's anybody that's around when you're celebrating your birthday and it's all about you sometimes. But when you're celebrating your friends and family, it's all about them, so we want to celebrate that. Um, what I want to do, and this is the audience participation of this speech of mine, <laughs> whenever I pump my fist, I want you to say, fight back. So try this with me, ready? Ready? Fight back! Louder. Ready? Fire! Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so here's a little, this is me before, <laughs> me with hair. Um, here to celebrate birthdays, I just celebrated my 46th birthday, and it was June 22nd, if you want to write that down. I love cards. I love presents. <laughs> you can mail me that, Kate. <laughs> I'm, uh, let's see, I was on the top of my game. I'm, uh, I'm a marathon runner. I've ran, this will be my, um, coming up, my uh, fourth uh, ACS determination event, um, as well as being as heavily involved in relay as I am uh, coming up to the Chicago Marathon. And I had just won third in my age group at the New England Championship. Um, before that, um, in November, I had won my age group at the Marine Corps Marathon. And before that, in 2007, I was seventh place. Oh yeah, and I brought my little trophies to show everybody. <laughs> my my Orifice crystal from from Boston. I was seventh master. So um, love, I love to run. It keeps me sane. It keeps me going. It keeps me feeling alive. So I celebrated my 46th birthday and went to my relay for life. I had I um had been running and training and getting ready for Chicago. My friend Judy had talked me into running Chicago Marathon for determination, and I had this lump in my stomach. And it wasn't going away. It was getting a little bit bigger. And my husband was watching it, and we felt it get bigger and had another lump. And he pushed me to go to the doctor. So we went to the doctor right before my relay. Didn't hear back. Went to the relay, celebrated survivorship, ran around, made Diane Barstow get that survivor banner for all those survivors um, to walk the lap. And uh, took some great pictures that day. And then the next uh, week, I went to the doctor, and she told me that I had cancer. And as I sat there and looked at my husband, tears welling up in his eyes, and I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm the healthiest person I know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I have cancer. And like, all right, so what are we going to do? How are we going to get rid of this thing? It's the first thing in my mind. All right, go out there and schedule some appointments. Let's figure it out. Let's get it done. And uh, so the next day, <laughs> that was my hair. <laughs> um, the next day, um, we had a CAT scan, we got the CAT scan, the biopsy, and it showed that I had a lymphoma. I have diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And one of the biggest things to do when you, when you get cancer, if you do get cancer, and if you ever do, I never thought I would get cancer either. It was crazy. Nothing I did, nothing hereditary. Um, the doctor said it's just, sometimes it just happens. And uh, it started out as a Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it was dormant for quite a long time, and then it became diffuse large B-cell. It took us about three weeks to figure it out. Three weeks, sorry, it felt like forever <laughs> the time. But it took about, I don't know, two weeks for them to get the right diagnosis. And it's real important to get the right diagnosis so you get the right treatment so that it is curable, so that it doesn't come back. And um, so we went to Mass General and we had a specialist, um, Jeffrey Barnes, take a look and, and had a bone marrow biopsy right there in the office right that day. Took a big old needle and <laughs> stuck it in. And, it was pretty painful, but we went through all the blood tests, and we, um, so we started treatment, and we found this really cool doctor in Western Mass, Dr. Sean Mullally, who's awesome, and, uh, yeah, picked her on crap. Tough chick, I got all those tough chick ones, too, nurse's favorite, and all that. <laughs> but Dr. Mullally's been awesome, he's a, also an athlete, and he understands all that, and it's been great, because both of them have been very encouraging with me in my marathons, and, um, because I had signed up to do Chicago, and my friend Judy, and everybody's like, okay, so is she going to run Chicago? And I'm in the middle of treatment, 
and uh, I'm doing Chicago. <laughs> and actually the doctor says I'm a little freakish <laughs> and uh, he's called me a beast <laughs> like you're crazy you're crazy everything's so crazy um, and when I post that I ran a 20 miler last week <laughs> or he's like you're not <laughs> me in treat with that methotrexate. So because I got the right diagnosis, I have this huge awful poison that's part of my treatment. So um, celebrating birthdays, cancer diagnosis. Oh yeah. So all you ladies in the room, when you get up in the morning and you comb your hair and you look at how your hair and your beautiful hair, and I love my hair, I love long brown hair, and I get up and I'm thinking, you know, that's the hard part. And I'm totally in denial because I was the healthiest person I knew. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, do I really have cancer? And I'm t telling everybody, and be like, oh yeah, I'm wearing the purple shirt this this next year. I'm all excited, you know. Like, and then my hair started coming out. It's coming out in droves. And uh, you look and like you ever imagined yourself bald? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> like I don't. That what would I look like bald? And uh, so I uh, started like, coming out in droves. My hair was coming out, and I we uh, decided to shave it. And you saw some of those photos and. Yeah, so there I am bald, but I was going to show you how to look bald. So, yeah, so here I am, I'm bald. Cards and I get so much support from my friends and colleagues and, and many of you in this room have just been incredibly supportive. But I um I got this one from a friend, Amanda. Her son loves this card because it says, if you ever get the question, why are you wearing a cap? You gotta tell them you're a pirate because then there'll be no follow-up questions. <laughs> My pirate cat. <laughs> I think it was pretty cool. <laughs> I think it was cool. So I got like this little pirate cat on, and there's no follow-up questions. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, many looks. We went to the beauty salon. They thought it'd be really cool on RelayForLife.org. They were gonna do a vote of what wig everybody likes the best. So yeah, you'll see some of those photos there too. We all laughed about that. So it's all about hope. When you have hope, you can share hope. And when you inspire others, they can inspire you. So looking for hope, I look for hope everywhere. I look for hope in all of you. I look for hope from all my friends. And um, people say I inspire them. Um, all my running and just running and training for the, the Chicago Marathon, just my posts and everything, people are inspired. But I am just so inspired by everybody else and how everybody else has just taken up this, this fight and I'm inspired by all of you and what all of you have done. So, um, I'm a team captain, team captain at the, at the Quaybog Relay in Western Massachusetts. I have relayed for 15 years. I was hired by Peg Camp, who we met last night. And um, I've been an area director and I direct the National Corporate Team Program. But um, I'm really, I really love my community and I really love Relay. And I know that's why. A lot of you are here because you love your communities and you want to bring Relay to your community and celebrate the survivors in your community. So I wanted to ask, oh yeah, so I went to the UTC Relay and I got to walk in my first survivor lap and I got to wear the sash and I got to hear the survivor speaker speak and, and how she relayed and how she relayed because she's here and she relays for her family and she relays so we can end cancer and I relay for all of that and I know a lot of you talk about that too. but. Um, I guess what I want to do is have everybody that's a cancer survivor stand up. I know you were celebrated earlier, but we'll celebrate. we need to celebrate all the time. <laughs> so stand up. <laughs> Yay. And all of you. And I've been through a lot of relays, and 
I've cried a lot of tears watching survivors walk the lap, and uh, you all inspire me too. So I just wanted to say that. And, and also, the one thing that I've seen about and I've felt during cancer is not to stop. Don't stop doing what you love to do. Don't stop celebrating, celebrating everything and everybody around you. And don't stop doing that. As you can see, I hope, um, I water ski, I'm a big athlete, and I haven't stopped running, and I'm, I'm going to do Chicago. I'm going to finish. I may not run a 305, but <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish and, uh, because I'm a survivor. Bye. I'm just going to close. No one can hold you back from doing all the things that you want to do. Keep your goals in sight. Listen to your body. Take one day at a time. Some days will be better than others, but every day is a blessing. So make each day the best it can be. Thank you very much.